Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and today we're going to be talking about Steve Fox. Now before we kick off this video, I'd like to let you guys know that we currently have a partnership with Loot Crate, which is a monthly subscription service for a box you receive each month in the mail containing different geeky goodies. Each month always has a different theme, so no Loot Crate is ever really the same. Now this month's theme is space, so each Loot Crate is guaranteed to feature something from Mass Effect, Destiny, Ratchet and & Clank and XCOM. So it seems like December's Loot Crate is going to be really damn cool. Now if you are interested, please look in the description below, as we have a link to their website, and if you use our discount code HBTWARRIOR, you get a 10% discount off your first purchase. Now on that note, let's get on to the video. Now Steve has a very sketchy history, as a lot of it is intertwined with the Mishima Zaibatsu, and for the purpose of telling a more dramatic story, I'll be explaining his backstory through each game, and what he has learned about himself from each different installment. Now Steve grew up in the United Kingdom, he's in fact an orphan but has always been interested in finding his parents as well as learning the origin of a massive scar running down one of his arms. Now during his time in the UK, Steve made a name for himself, becoming the face of boxing. Now one day during one of his matches, he'd be ordered by the Mafia to throw his high stakes match. So when Steve entered the ring, he knocked out the guy pretty much straight away. And due to this, the Mafia put a bounty on his head. Steve would then travel out to the USA, with the hopes that he'd get away from the Mafia. Now whilst out there, he'd catch word of the King of the Iron Fist tournament, in which some of the world's best fighters would participate, so understandably he would enter. Now whilst in the tournament, he'd learn about his connection to the Mishima Zaibatsu, so at some point he'd break into one of their facilities and hack into one of their computers to learn more about his parents, and by doing so he'd learn about his mother, and would learn that his mother was none other than the Irish born assassin Nina Williams. Now one day when he'd be entering his hotel, the Union Jack, his bodyguards would turn on him, as they were hired by the Mafia to take him out, but luckily he was saved by his mother. Although she'd also been hired to kill him, she wasn't quite able to pull the trigger, and instead saved his life by killing the two bodyguards. Now when Steve saw it was her, he would begin pursuing her down an alleyway, which led to the two finally being able to come into contact with each other. But before the two could actually have their first proper conversation, the police officer Lee Wu Long would appear, pulling out a gun on Steve's mother, which would force her to leave the premises. Now in Tekken 5, Steve would get some assistance from Lee Wu Long, as the two were interested with this kind of human creations that the Mishima Zaibatsu had been up to. Now the more Steve learned about this, the more horrifying it had slowly become. He amongst many young children were nothing more than an experiment performed by the Mishima Zaibatsu. With revenge in mind, he had entered the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 5 to tear apart the Mishima Zaibatsu from the inside out. Now at some point during or after the tournament, Steve would head out to every Mishima Zaibatsu laboratory, destroying every single artificial birth facility they had. This would allow him to sleep at night, knowing that he was at least able to do something right. Now after destroying the laboratory, Steve would return back to the world of boxing. Things were going extremely well for him, until Jin became the head of the Mishima Zaibatsu. Jin would throw the world into chaos, starting an all out war for the purpose of destroying his father Kazuya. Now due to this, many boxing tournaments were in fact cancelled, and without boxing, Steve had no livelihood, and due to this he became broke. Now Steve in fact received an invitation from Martial Law and Paul Phoenix, as their livelihood was doing just about as well as Steve's had, so together they would train with each other and enter the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 6, with the agreement if that any of them won, then they would split the money three ways, but neither of them were successful. Now Steve does return in Tekken 7, where his main costume seems to be a boxing attire, so we can definitely presume that after Jin fell, that the world was kind of restored back to its original state, and world boxing tournaments began to flourish, so no doubt in my mind, Steve became the world's best boxer. And that's really it for Steve. Steve, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I haven't made a Tekken video in god knows how long, so let me know in the comments below if I've missed anything. Might also add that I left out Tag 2's ending, as that game in itself is kind of a spin-off. Now next week I'll be doing another Street Fighter character, so please put down in the comments below what you'd like to see. And after that I'll be doing another Tekken video, and your choices are Yoshimitsu or Armor King, so please put down in the comments below what you guys would love to see. Now I don't normally ask for this guys, but if possible let's try getting this video to about 750 or 1000 likes, as I'm pretty sure everyone's been talking about this now and YouTube has like a broken algorithm system, so by you guys kind of liking and commenting on this video, it's going to help me and this channel out a lot. So if possible guys, please definitely do that. Now as always guys, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you all next time.